use of convective clouds over the western ghat derived from the weather radar observations good sir Good afternoon everyone I am Utsav Bhamik and today I shall be speaking on our recent publication entitled The Statistical Characteristics of Convective Clouds Over the Western Ghats Derived from Weather Radar Observations This work was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research Atmospheres and my co-authors are Sachin Deshpande Shubhrat Kumar Das and Jee Pandey Thare I am thankful to the committee for selecting me uh, as a my paper as the best student paper award I introduce by saying the importance of atmospheric convection. Atmospheric convection drives the tropical weather and climate systems. Convective clouds occurs in ensembles that uh, covers a range of phenomena from shallow isolated cells to large mesoscale systems. Convective elements acquire a variety of shape, size, orientation, motions and life cycle behavior. Numerical weather prediction models suffer limitations to capture them owing to model representation of convection numerous observation of convections are needed to achieve better representation of physical processes through improved parameterizations there exist several observational platforms like the satellites the wind profilers the lightning location networks and the scanning radars of these the scanning radars have a unique capability of providing a three dimensional structure of the convective properties of atmosphere at frequent intervals of time with high spatial resolution the western ghats of india are the coastally oriented mesoscale mountain ranges as we can see here uh, having a narrow width and an average elevation of 1 km they run parallel to the indian west coast summer precipitation over the indian west coast is an important facet of the indian summer monsoon despite being one of the largest rainfall regions of the southwest asian monsoon system observation of convective life cycle is severely lacking over this region there have been recently be few ground based case studies like konvaretal deshpande etal dasetal etc <clears throat> however most studies over the western ghats have been confined to the use of long term satellite data sets like kravatsky and house escobar etal shigay etal and others now i shall be speaking about some of the uh, satellite studies that have been affected over the western ghats figure to the left uh, has been discussed several times today uh, this is a result from romanski and house who have found out the monsoon precipitation climatology using trmm 2825 data sets showing three main regions of rain patterns over the western ghats the southern himalayas and the myanmar coast This figure shows the horizontal variation of the vertical distribution of heating and wind during the monsoon over the western ghats and the myanmar coast and uh, the bottom panel shows the uh, topography of the region along the 18 degree north so the colors indicate the heating and the arrows indicate the arrows indicate the uh, winds so we see shallow heating to be dominant At, at lower levels over the western ghats and the heating structure is deep over the uh, myanmar coast which translates to shallow cloud systems over the western ghats and deeper cloud systems over the myanmar coast as shown by these studies <laughs> although the satellite based studies over the western ghats provide a spatially broader context for convective systems they lack to provide time continuous aspect of convection in terms of their formation growth movement and duration thus a number of questions remains unanswered for example where does convection initiate over the western ghats what is their average size what are their propagation aspect in terms of average lifetime their vertical structure their diurnal cycle etc the time continuous radar observations pertaining to the small scale convective state of the atmosphere at mount dev shall provide the best test bed to study these questions This is our radar facility of IITM at Mantur Dev which is 1.3 km above the mean sea level uh with the expand precipitation radar at a wavelength of 3 cm and a frequency of 9 GHz it has a beam width of 1 degree and we have a cloud radar which is a K band radar figure to the right shows the topography of the western ghats with the 
location of the Mandrative region shown by the star. The concentric circles are every 25 kilometer surveillance distance from the radar. We see the radar has an overall good view of precipitation around itself with uh, parts covering parts of oceans, the coastal region, the mountain tops, and the lee sides. This radar provides uh, ma uh, maps the precipitation with mesoscale coverage and convective scale resolution. It uh, scans the entire volume of the atmosphere at every 12 minute scan interval, encompassing an area of 50,000 square kilometer. That is, it has a radius from its center to about 125 kilometer. We generate a gridded statistics of convective cell properties. Here, we use an object-oriented tracking algorithm based on a Lagrangian approach on the expand radar data to identify and track the convective cells. Here, the convective cells are storms, which I shall be interchangeably using in my uh, subsequent slides is defined as a three-dimensional region of contiguous region of reflectivity with a minimum reflectivity of 35 dBz, having a volume of 15 cubic kilometer and persisting for a minimum of two radar scans, that is 24 minutes. With this criterion, around 5,000 storms were identified during monsoon 2014. For all the identified convective cells, various convective properties are obtained to generate a gridded statistics of convection over the entire radar domain. For example, the location, frequency, and initiation time of the cells, the 35 dBz convective top heights, their area and volume, the diurnal evolution of the convective cell properties, cell kinematics, and classification of the convective cells. Now I shall be discussing about the orographic influence of, of Western Ghats on convection. The figure to the left is the topography map as we have seen earlier. There is a sharp rise of topography along the north-south ranges as evident in this figure. Figure to the right is the composite of the normalized storm frequency occurrence during the monsoon 2014. So we see a nice clustering of enhanced storm activity along the windward slopes of the mountain. They uh, tend to form and maintain along the elevated slopes of the mountain compared to the coastal and lee regions. Thus, the increased frequency of the convective cell occurrences along the windward mountains compared to the coastal and lee regions highlights the orographic influence on the convective activity. This figure shows the spatial distribution of the convective cells on a month to month basis. For the month of June, we see higher occurrences over the elevated slopes and the coastal regions. For the month of July and August, we see the storms clustering uh, nicely along the north-south mountain ranges. And in September, the storm occurrences uh, slightly increase over the lee side and they are basically scattered. Now we wanted to look at the influence of the large-scale flow and moisture on the spatial distribution of the convective storms. Thus, uh, we saw the, we analyzed the ECMWS specific humidity and wind anomalies at the surface. The color represents the uh, anomalies of specific humidity and the arrows indicate the anomalies of the wind. We take a larger zone of which the black square box approximates the radar domain and the black dot approximates the radar location. So in the month of June, we can see uh, moist ocean and drier lands with weak westerlies and enhanced humidity gradient from the windward to the leeward side, which explains why there are higher storms in the elevated slopes and coastal regions. July was anomalously drier with westerlies uh, uh, prevailing, prevailing over the region. So uh, we had lesser number of storms during July as compared to August. In August, we have increased storm occurrences in the lee side, probably due to the cyclonic circulation with enhanced moisture that favors numerous storms, especially in the eastern portion of the domain during August. In September, we have weak so, uh, southwesterlies to southerlies over the, over the domain, which uh, and has increased moisture occurrences uh, in the southern and eastern portion, which uh, translates into the scattered storm phenomena in the uh, September month. Now we wanted to look into how the convection responds to the changes in the underlying surface as the day evolves. For that, we plot the three hourly variation in the convective cell onset. The convective cell onset as indicated by the black annular circle is defined as the first time occurrence of convective cells with reflectivity of 35 dBz. Thus, it may be referred to as the storm 
as a newly uh, uh, formed single storm, directly the convective activity is triggered upstream of the mountain barriers. They intensified over the uh, upslope or the windward slopes of the mountain and they moved over to the lee side. Thus, there is a systematic eastward progression of the convective cell onset locations which shows clear differences in the dominant local time of onset of convective cells with respect to underlying topography. Here, we, uh, I want to uh, bring out another point that these are the ridges of the Western Ghats mountain and the onset locations are found to be anchored along those ridges. So uh, it may be thought of that due to differential heating of the um, different elevations of the Western Ghat mountains, they small, form small pockets of convection where the convection initiates. And also, uh, if we see uh, the three hourly variation, uh, during afternoon hours, there is an intensification of the onset phenomena, which also hints at uh, effect of diurnal, superimposed diurnal cycle on the convective activity. We look into the spatial distribution of different convective cell properties, like these storm top heights, which is the, the 35 dBZ top heights is the maximum height reached by uh, a 35 dBZ reflectivity echo within a cell. The convective volume, which is greater than 40 dBZ, indicates the intense convective core within a storm. The storm vector here represents, the, uh, the length of the vector represents the speed and the arrow represents the direction. The speed are obtained by the differences between the starting point of the storm and the uh, dissipation phase divided by the time taken for the storm to travel that distance. In the first figure, we see shallow precipitating top heights in the windward side around less than 5 km or 6 km and deeper precipitating top heights in the leeward side. Also, in the intense convective course were preferred in the leeward side of the domain. The average storm movement was found during monsoon to be from the west to east. We now investigate the con combined variation in the convective cell depth prescribed by the 0 dBZ top heights and intensity prescribed by the 35 dBZ top heights. Here we have the 2D distribution of the 0 dBZ and 35 dBZ uh, tops. The color of each contour represents the percentage of cells in each 0 dBZ and 35 dBZ height bin. The 2D distribution elucidates a range of internal convective structures in relation to the convective 0 dBZ top heights. We evaluated the percentage of cells with 0 dBZ tops greater than 5 km as well as 35 dBZ tops greater than 5 km. And higher, highest percentage was found during the month of June, which was the onset month. Thus, June corresponded to the period associated with deepest convection, having intense internal structure. We can see here that uh, the highest contour exceeds 6 km for the month of June. But for other months like uh, July, August and September, all the highest contour is much below 6 km level. The frequency distribution of convective cell properties are next looked into, like the top heights, the area, the duration. From these figures, it is evident that the convective cell properties follow a log normal frequency distribution. The convective clouds grow and develop uh, by some stochastic processes which are dependent <coughs> on the law of proportionate effects and that results in the log normal distribution of eco characteristics. The mean precipitating top heights was found to be shallow, uh, that is around 5.5 km, which shows the predominance of shallow convection in this region. This mode is near the climatological freezing level. Shige et al. in 2016 have also found out shadow heights of precipitating convection over the region. They have uh, also pointed out that microwave uh, radiometer algorithms suffer limitations as they uh, severely underestimate rainfall uh, over the Western Ghats since these algorithms implicitly assumes that higher rainfall is associated with deeper top heights. The mean storm area is around 27 square kilometer. It is the projection of this storm onto the lowest Cartesian grid of the uh, system. The small size storms dominate the region uh, and the total population of the convective system, which shows sub MCS scale nature of the convection. The duration for which the storm lasts was around 46 minutes, which shows shorter lifetime, probably due to the uh, more splitting and merging phenomena occurs in storm, which determines the lifetime of a storm. 
so in this region, we presume that the splitting phenomena is more, which limits the lifetime of the storms to lower values. We now explore the relationship of different convective cell properties. First figure shows the uh, variation of the storm duration with the storm volume. The black line shows the mean of the distribution. The, blue show, uh, the red line shows the fifth percentile. The pink line shows the 95th percentile. So larger storms with higher storm volume persist for longer duration. Then we see the normalized distribution of storms of different duration with respect to maximum reflectivity. So we see a progressive shift of storms of higher duration to larger reflectivity values. That is, the long persisting storms and which are of higher intensity produce, may produce more precipitation than the shorter lived ones. The third figure shows the variation of the 35 degrees storm top heights with respect to volume. So the convective cells with larger volumes up to 150 uh, cubic kilometer attains greater top heights up to uh, nine, four to nine kilometers and have a larger horizontal extent. The diurnal cycle of uh, convection and precipitation over a region plays a fundamental role in framing the regional weather pattern. With that in aim, we looked into the diurnal cycle of different convective cell properties, like the cell occurrence, the vertically integrated liquid, volume, top heights, reflectivity, area, precipitation, flux, and duration. So from this, these figures, it is clear that the convective systems are present throughout the day as an orographic response to monsoon flow with a superimposed diurnal cycle with a major afternoon peak, which may be related to systems over land and a barely discernible uh, early morning peak related to systems over the ocean. The maximum in convective area lags several hours to the maximum in the precipitation flux. Peter et al. have attributed this lag to the detrainment of convective elements near the freezing level inversions, which forms widespread systems as the day advances. Now we look into the uh, kinematics of the convective cells in terms of their speed, their direction, their orientation uh, that they acquire during their lifetime. The frequency distribution of the storm speed shows they are also distributed in a log normal fashion with a sharp rise and a gradual fall. The storms move with a slower speed of 3 to 5 meters per second on an average. Storms during their lifetime moved in a variety of directions, but they were more preferred along the northeast to east direction from 60 to 100 degrees. Now we wanted to investigate what makes the storm move in that direction. So we analyzed the 850 hectopascal uh, low level flow from the ECMWF reanalysis data sets. The two, these two figures have been summarized in this Windrose diagram, where we see that the large scale flow at low levels is from west to east, which acts as a steering flow for the storms to get advected from west to east. Now, we, if we approximate our storms by an ellipse, the angle, the major axis of the ellipse makes with the true north. If this is the ellipse, the angle, the major axis it makes with the true north is called the orientation angle of the storms. So during the lifetime, the storm acquired variety of uh, orientations from 0 to 180 degree with a modal orientation of 90 degree. Now, uh, we tried to uh, plot all the storms with modal orientation of 90 degree in this figure. And we see a nice clustering of these storms along the north-south mountain ranges where we have the ridges, east-west ridges parallel to them. Thus, these storms get aligned parallel to the mountain ridges which shows the influence of the mountain ridges in aligning of the storms. Now to assess the effect of mean elevation profile on the spatial structure of convective storms with respect to local time, we undertake the reduced dimension analysis of the cell motion. The first figure shows the latitude average cross coast component along the west to east direction of the topography. And the second figure shows the longitude average along coast dimension from south to north of the steady region. The bottom panel shows the diurnal Hofmoller type of diagram where the uh, diurnal cycle is repeated for clarity in the y axis. So here we see rich topographic variation in the cross coast dimension, whereas the variation is relatively flat in the along coast dimension. So uh, we plot the uh, storm speed in, this, in these plots. So we see along the cross coast dimension, we have sloping pattern of storm activity, which indicates systematic progression with time. 
this sloping pattern is matching with the sloping pattern of the cross coast. Thus, the storm activity appears to self-organize over different elevations in the east-west di direction, likely due to differential heating of the surface due to differences in elevation. Whereas in the along coast component, the horizontal patterns are flat, suggesting weak propagation speed, distinctive of unorganized convection. So we see there a spatial temporally preferred location of storm activity and a prominent diurnal cycle is present in both cross coast and along coast dimensions. We classify the convective cells based on their top heights following the range height criteria of John Senetel. The cumulus clouds, 0 to 4 km, indicated by the black square, the congestus, 4 to 9 km, indicated by the red circles, and the deep convection greater than 9 km, indicated by the blue triangles. So this is a spatial distribution of different cloud types. So we see ocean of red, that is, the congestive cells are more abundant of all the cell types, with a preferential clustering of the shallower cells along the north-south mountain ranges. Deeper and isolated, uh, deeper cells are most frequent over the leeward side of the region, with some isolated events over the mountains. We now look into the diurnal variation of different cell types, and we see that there are differences among the amplitude and phases of the three different types, the cumulus, congestus, and the deep. The congestive cells peak at around 14 hours and the deep cells peak at around 16 hours. This lead lag relationship indicates a shallow to deep transition. For such transitions to occur, the metroposphere moistening and heating by congestus is one of the important factors. I conclude by saying that expand radar observations were used to derive the gridded statistics of convective clouds over the western huts, providing the first time view of the time continuous aspect of convection over the region. The convective cells form and maintained along the windward slopes of the mountain compared to the coastal and lee sites, which highlighted the orographic response to the southwesterly flow. The diurnal cycle showed a major afternoon peak and a minor morning peak, which may be related to the systems over land and that over oceans, respectively. Cells were characterized by shallow depths, sub MCS scales, shorter duration, and slow speeds. Convective cell area, height, and duration followed log normal distribution. The congestive cells were more numerous on the windward side and they had a clustering over the north-south mountain, while deep cells were uh, found to dominate over the lee side. The congestive and the deep moats showed a phase lag relationship amongst themselves. Cells were found to orient in the east-west direction along the mountain ridges, which showed the influence of ridges in aligning of the storms. The radar derived statistics of convective clouds here should provide a useful source for validation of cloud resolving models. I would take it an opportunity to acknowledge Professor Ravindran Jindaya, the director of IITM, my supervisors, Dr. G. Pandithurai and Dr. Sachin Deshpande, the Radar and Satellite Metrology Group, all the engineers who helped to collect radar observation amidst rough weather conditions, DST Inspire Fellowship, my family and friends. Thank you.